Hello everybody, it's Lemme and Finish Trade today. It's my turn at the microphone and today we're going to talk about uh the real demons uh and the the way they operate and why of course you should not be messing around with certain medica um recreational drugs or even certain prescription drugs because of the way that the demonic entities will use those to control you. I want to say a man was was executed for the crime of drinking, the, killing a 12-year-old and drinking his blood. Uh, this was a friend of his 15-year-old nephew. And he said that um, while he was tripping on crystal meth that a demon said to kill the young man and drink his blood. Um... Now, I was thinking that's pretty extreme, but let's talk about this. We talked about negative self-talk in the past. This is obviously, it's not negative self-talk. This is a talk from an outside entity speaking through your mind. However, there's a, a couple questions I did not get answered from, and I'd like to ask, uh, work on those questions right now. Number one is, what happened to this man's will? Um, there's... So what did the demon offer him in exchange for taking another soul to Hades? Um, and second of all is obviously he sold his own soul to Hades and he ended up basically losing his life in the process. Um, the same also applies for people who are not necessarily executed by the state but also are self-inflicted executions such as suicides um is is what's what do they gain by doing this actions i i personally do not know what to gain by it so let's talk about what now to understand some of what we're talking about you have to be watching some of the once upon a time episodes that are on the area at abc networks right now um but the crew is right now is in hades or sheol the grave if you will or hell pick your name it's still not a nice place. It's not a peaceful place to repose for the souls, okay? This is a place of the damned. There's actually Hades, like he said, is I have multiple layers of people who are damned to hell. Some are here, they said, just got their gravestones up. Some of them have them flipped over, or so it's went to heaven or to the other side. And then some gravestones are split in twain. Those that are really damned, damned souls. Okay, so let's, um, that was Cruella de Vil that told that to, um, Regina. So let's gonna take a look at this now. Um, so this man was taking crystal meth. First of all, any kind of controlled substance, prescription or otherwise that you take, is going to leave a door open for a dark entity to come into your life. A crystal myth, unfortunately, has a habit of incapacitating you in ways that just like excessive use of any kind of medication, even recreational drug can do, is at least your mind open for negative intruders to come in. And when they do come in, if you don't have enough willpower to tell them, no, I will not kill my 12 year old, my, my 15 year old's friend, drink his blood, um, then they win and sometimes they're very really sneaky the way they do it but they will win and when they do is that's another that's another notch under the roster of success because you see there's a war going on for souls right now and it's been going on for 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 thousands of years and the reason is is because the, um, the dark side knows that the equipment Armageddon or Ragnarok is coming up and they are preparing for the great battle. But to do that, they need the worst of the worst to serve their minions. Um, and so that they are trying to take as many souls to hell, to the left door boot camp, if you will. And um, however, just as I mentioned in the Once Upon a Time episode, sometimes... The souls that are destined for Hades um, are lucky enough that they are able to be res saved and go home to the other side, which of course angers Hades or Lucifer. Pick your name, Baal, Baphinette, whoever you want to pick your name, it doesn't matter. You know what we're talking about. We're not talking about Mother Us on the side. 
Um, when the time of the great battle starts, there will be a four, there'll be the two sides. Okay, the good, Mama Asna, Father Yahweh, me, Michelle, will be on one side. Lucifer, Hades, his demons, and his minions will be on the other side. And right now, if you look at the situation in the world, it's a tug of war. Right now, Hades is winning for a little while. But eventually, it's going to be that he's going to lose the final battle as going to result in Earth going back to Mother and Father God. Um, that's the intended um, plan. It's specified in the Book of Revelation. It's specified in the... Uh, in the, in the Nordic lore, the concept of Ragnarok. So you're going to see this kind of happening. And it's going to happen in a very profound way. So do I think the state of Texas did the right thing by executing this man? No, I do not. I think that they should have, first of all, offered him an exorcism. Um, especially if he really did not want to do the murder, but he did the murder anyway. Um... Well, obviously, we have to say, well, he's obviously been coerced by some other entity, um, so which means he was not of his own free will. It was not his own thoughts. Sure, he killed the young man, but did he actually do it because he really wanted to taste blood? Or did he do it because the demonic entity offered him something that he could not refuse? He's dead now. I can't ask him that question. He confessed that was what happened, but that should be enough of a reason to go ahead and say, would you be willing to go through an exorcism first if it could save your life? Um, and if I was in his shoes and if I had something like that happen to me, I would say, please let me have an exorcism first. Unless he was so corrupted, unless he was so, so defiled and, 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 and soiled that an exorcism would do nothing except be a classic waste of time, or if he refused it outright, um, then I think we'd have a different situation altogether. But I don't think that's what happened. Um, so yes, there's a, they have a, these demons. These demons have a quota they have to meet. They have to meet. They have to take so many souls uh, per year. And they do this, and they're very good at it. They've got ways, some of the ways is the ways that they have, we've created. Um, the dark entities are working with the Illuminati, and the Illuminati is, is the evil globalist groups. They work with them too. But they also is the part of the Anunnaki. They're the dark Anunnaki. These are the ones that created the problems. They work with the greys. Now, the core of the greys, the greys are not... Um, not all greys are evil. Okay, so let's get this clear. This is what gets confusing. I don't want to get too much into the greys because this confuses me too. But we have to talk about them briefly because they are out there. And they are uh, another layer to this great war of recruitment that we all are talking about. Um, there's two sets of greys. you got your good greys and your bad greys. Okay? Now, these greys are not humans. Okay? They are not Homo sapien sapien, okay? Um, they may not even mean mammals. We don't know, okay? That's not the point. The problem is, is the good greys are trying to help us to understand the bad greys. The bad greys are the ones that are trying to do all this horrible stuff by poking needles in you and, and torturing your body and trying to find ways to make you spread your genetic material. That's because they're soulless. They don't have souls. They gave their souls up at the time of the great war between them and uh, Father and Mother God and Hades. They actually work with Hades. Hades is as human alien as you can get, but he's beefing that because he has horns and all that. It's the goat with all the ugly shapes figures. But the thing is, is that they know, I'm talking about the bad guys, they know that they have to meet so many quotas to in order to be enough forces to supposedly be an equal army against the army of good. Okay? Now, the army of good right now is, is really being pummeled. Um, I hate to say it, it's true. It's They're really being pummeled. We're on an earth where the Illuminati, which is predominantly the bad people, are working with the devil and his team. And they are trying to destroy us, uh, the good people who are trying to do the right things. 
They're doing that by first of all recommending that people should start using illicit drugs like crystal meth and uh, things that are really strong drugs and that mentally warp your brain and your consciousness. And when they do that, it's, of course, it's game over. <laughs> I mean, it's just like that poor, poor young man realizes that he faced the the poison t poison needle that was in him, right? Well, he's not dead. He's 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 now in he's in hell. He's he's in hell. I don't think he wanted to be in hell. Okay, I don't know even if he really understood exactly what you know why he's in hell. I don't know if he was Christian or not, but that's not the point. Um. So that demon that was working through his mind has got another soul under his belt. So, and he actually, this guy through him took another soul too. It's just like uh, Hades said to Ripple Stilskin, Ah, how many glorious souls have you brought me? Why would he say that? Because the way Grumble Stilskin and the show worked, he always seems to be bringing Hades the best to the best. The best souls, okay? Uh, however, Hades, which is a dishonest asshole in his own right, um, realized that Rumpel Stillskin, which originally killed somebody to make sure that he would never have to worry about um, fulfilling a contract or getting a second-born son, well, guess what? Um, he said, you remember this? He be, Hades brings this guy out and he says, Remember this guy? Yeah, well, guess what? You forgot one thing. Contracts in hell don't end just because somebody dies. Oh no, he said. Hades is laughing his head off. Yeah, your ass now belongs to me. And Rumble still can't realize he was double busted at least a Sunday. Why? Because he thought I killed this guy. I'm gonna go ahead. The contract's over. No, it doesn't work that. Um, but that's you say that's TV. Yeah. Well, I hate to say it, it actually is real. Realistically, it does happen that way. Um, death does not end the contract with hell. Okay, after all, your physical life is fading. It's basically as long as you level get your soul, and he's all set. More souls he gets, the more zombies he makes, um, the more hopefully he's going to be able to defeat the forces of good. I don't know if he really thinks about how much that's going to happen, because the sad truth is it says in both the book of Ragnarok and it also says in the book of Revelation of St. John Divine, he says, yeah, uh -uh, devil, he's not going to win, um, despite his best efforts. Okay. Uh, so now let's talk about what happens to those dark entities. I'm talking about the real dark ones. The ones that are really, truly bad to the bone. The, 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 the Mansons, Troll Mansons, the others. The ones that are really evil. What happens to them? Um, in the end of the, um, the final battle. Well, it's said that, um, they will face the final and second death. I, that's like what, uh, Cruella said to, um... The, um, Regina, that is when the gravestone gets cracked in half. Um, they are forever damned to the most heinous damnation of all, which is they lose their self-identity. Um, that's like the lowest level of hell. You don't want to go there. It's scary. Um, I can visualize it and I'm, it just creeps me out completely. 100%. Michelle would agree with me on that. Um, now on the other hand, um, what about us? What about the good side? Do we have anything like that? Do we have to worry about anything? Do would a good person ever willingly take another person's life and drink their soul? Or drink their blood? No, because the blood is the life force of the human body. It is the life force that gives the human body existence. Um, we, treasure, we treasure all life. And we would prefer... That everybody um, be happy and joyful, but we understand that sometimes people do, you know, they do get sick, they do get old, they do die, and then that's different, okay? But that's not the same thing of, in vi of violating somebody and drinking, killing them, and then drinking their blood. That's that's completely different. Um, I know about vampirism, and I know about the vampires, the real, the sanguine vampires, the ones that have ethics anyway. Will ask. For a donator, a donor to make a donation of blood for them to feed. Now that's not the same thing. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, in this case, brutally stealing a soul of another and drinking their life force. Um, that is really, really cold and cruel, and that is not even to be um, commended. Um, but here on the other side, we've been trying to reach out to them 
and try to speak to them and say, look, you don't have to do this shit. You don't have to kill anybody. Um, and I think in the last few years, thanks to the the constant pushing of the sci-fi fantasy, uh, glori glorifying death and the de demonic the persuasions and everything. And so who runs the TV world? It's the Illuminati or running the Illuminati or evil. Now, Michelle got an application to join the Illuminati. They actually wanted her to become a part of the Illuminati. She tore it up. She said, no thanks, uh, for reasons that she knew damn well what that would mean. And that would be a really bad choice for us to be part of something that evil uh, grouping. Because once you become a part of something like that, it's just like when you soul, sign your soul and blood to the devil. Um, you are totally... Uh, in chains. You're not going to be able to get out of that contract very easily, if at all. If forever, it's binding. Um, so that's the reason why I tend to think that, you know, we need to be careful, especially if you are using medications, prescription or otherwise, drugs or otherwise, I don't care what it is. If you're starting using it in something and somebody, a negative entity that you don't know or is trying to tell you to do something that's really, really, really not good. And you have always have the ability, I know it's hard, because sometimes it's right, they really make it tempting, right? You have the right, and you do have the ability to do it, is to stand up and say, no, I will not do that. But if you willingly see, yeah, okay, and do with something that's definitely not in um, the best interest of Mother and Father God's side, then obviously you have just took in the escalator or more like a free fall to the dark forces and then they own you and it's going to be very hard to get out away from that and and sometimes it's it's really not worth it i don't know what this man was offered by this demon to make it um such a great idea to kill a 12 year old um but it was years ago but clearly the devil got his another two souls he got the soul of a 12 year old and he got the soul of the man I was later killed by the state of Texas. So, you know, you, you think about that. It's um, The state of Texas did not offer him the ability to have an exorcism. They did not offer him any way to redeem from his redeem his, himself. And so he was damned to the dark forces because of completing the devil's contract, the demon's contract. He has been damned. Um, he can't. He can't be saved at this point. Uh, he's locked in there in the contract because of a demonic promise. And whoever he said to him, made a deal with him. I don't know. Um, sometimes we as Catholics are taught that we can we should pray for the souls in purgatory. Purgatory is not the same thing as hell. Okay, let's get this clear. Purgatory is where you are temporarily for a time are separated from mother and father God. Okay? It is sort of a time to emotionally cleanse yourself of your sins. That's why it's called purgatory or in Latin purgatorium. It's intended to be, like if you will, a chance to kind of like the drunk tank at the police department. Where it's, yeah, you might have to go to the court the next a few days later, but it get a chance to kind of cool your heels and think about what you did and, and at least then when you get up to the judge you can at least you know say is you know I really gave her some thought of what happened and I'm sorry I didn't mean it you know and this judge which in this case is is um, the elders on the other side that will randomly call souls up from purgatorium into um, the hearings it, it doesn't always happen exactly you know you won't always know if it's going to be on a Wednesday or Thursday because it could be there for a day, you could be there for a week, because time is infinite time. There's no days and hours, minutes and seconds on the other side. It's just, is, all time. All time, all the time. If that makes any sense. Or it's just, there's no days, hours, minutes and seconds. Okay? It's as long as they feel it has to be for you before you can reach that level of cleanliness to enter into um, the other side proper. Um, now, once you do manage to understand this, this is going to take a space on another TV show. Please understand these are movies and don't take them everything is the same as you see in the movies as gospel. But defending your life on Meryl Streep is very accurate. What was it, Gutenberg and Meryl Streep? Yeah. Okay. So it's very pretty close to exactly what happens is that during this time, you go to this in-between place. It's not hell. It's not heaven. It's 
purgatory. It's designed to be like a time that you, you're not close to Mother and Father God. You're not close to your relatives, your friends, or family, more than likely. You are by yourself. And you will have to, you know, you know, think about what you are or who you are and, and prove to Mother and, and Father God the judge that says, okay, you know, I think I made a mistake and I only accepted those mistakes in my past and I'm really sorry for the mistakes I made. And, and it's okay. Everybody's gonna, everybody goes to purgatory. Everybody does. It don't stay a little long, but we do go there. Very few people go straight through to heaven. It does happen, but that's pretty slim to none. Jesus went straight through to heaven, but he was a mystical traveler. He came here for a reason, and so and he was free of sin. So every way possible, so Jesus went straight through back to heaven, whereas most people don't do that. They go to purgatory first in due time. They, like Michelle likes to think of purgatory as a big grand, uh, like a big train station, kind of like Grand Central Penn Station. Um, or you're all in this great big waiting room and you're waiting for your train, you know, for, you know, your 5 you know, your 905 train and you don't know when it's coming and the, and, and you go to the window and the, and then, and the ticket office says, well, you know, they're running into some maintenance problem on the track. I can't tell you when the 905 is going to be here. It could be here anytime because they can't tell you how long you're going to be in purgatory. Only mother and father God, um, have the authority um, if it's necessary to put you in purgatory to know how long you're going to be in purgatory. And it's nothing to be afraid of. Just, you know, it's, you know, unless something really happens, really, really evil, uh, trust me, if you're really evil, you're not even going to have that chance to go into purgatory. You're just going to go straight to the left door, boom, that's it. But if you are in purgatory, you can be rest assured that you will see the other side. It's just that it's not going to happen right away. Sadly enough for this young man, he won't see the other side. So what happens to all those people at the end of Ragnarok? When all the evil will, people will be cleaned out. <clears throat> well, their souls, even the damned ones, shall be reabsorbed into mother and fathers than the Godhead and all creation. And they will start fresh. Um, do they get a second chance after that? I don't know. Is it possible? Yes. Um, but what about all of us who've never deliberately done anything like this and have always tried to live a perfect life? And even if we screw up, well, what happens to us? Well, we go home, and then if we choose to, we'll come back another time. Or we might choose to go to another place. We might choose to go to another um, settlement instead of Earth. Well, the Earth is just one of many planets we can go to. Um, me and Michelle have talked about so many ideas in the past. About where are we going to go? Where are we going? Why are we not going to stay here? Why are we going to stay here? And we never can be really sure. But let's talk about one thing, guys. Now, for those of you who are really seriously afraid, and you should be, is afraid that you're going to be risking yourself going through the left door and never seeing the other side ever until ever. <laughs> well, um, the first thing is is you need to stand strong and stand up to the demons. They're demons. They are not physical entities. They cannot hurt you directly. Okay, and I said the magic word directly, but demons have a very interesting ability to have hurt you through other manipulation of all the humans. So you need to stand strong and stand proud. Second thing you need to do is keep in contact with Mother and Father God and through your guardian angel and your and your uh, the principalities and the thrones, which are out there to protect you, which also includes your guardian angels. Stand strong. Stay behind all your convictions, which you believe is true and is best. Don't back down. If you know, for example, if somebody is wrong, you know it's wrong. It's instinctually known to you. You don't even have to challenge it. Then you will definitely say, I will not do it. And you need to tell whoever that negative entity is that's telling you otherwise to, to uh, that you're not going to do it. Period. Okay. Um, so that's the reason why I really kind of feel uh, it's a tragedy what happened to this guy in Texas. But you know what? The sad truth is, what's even more tragedy is that 12-year-old boy didn't even have a clue what was going on. And 
That's a sad shame. You know. Um, there's so much evil in this world now that to those of us who try to do the right thing and try to be good people, we see it and we all cringe. We know it's wrong. We just wish that the new page of the new plan of Mother and Father God, Michelle's brother, Jesus, my brother, have been working on is trying to get us to start over with a new page. I really wish they would hurry up and get the book started and the plan started because things are just getting really out of control. And it's not going to get any better until that time. Things are just going to really come apart at the seams. And now, uh, Michelle, you, you want to talk something briefly about the Nibiru thing. I, at least you know it. Uh, yeah, there's... Scientists believe there really is a Nibiru. Um, 27 million year orbit. 27 million year orbit is pretty long. Yeah. <laughs> um, because they're seeing that an outside resource is causing... Um, the solar system spatial disturbances. Um, so they do believe that the Nibiru may be actually a real thing, but at this point, it's pretty far out there, so it's hard to see it very well. But Nibiru, is it designed to be a planet killer, or is it just because of its sheer size? It's because of its sheer size. It's highly, highly elliptical orbit. It's just... It's funny the Sumerians have mentioned it, but they don't really explain exactly why... Nibiru is doing this. Okay. Um, so I don't really know exactly. I've heard that Nibiru is a spaceship. I've heard that Nibiru is just a planet that's ten times bigger than Earth. Smaller than Jupiter. It's a rocky planet. Okay, so it's not a gas giant. Right. Um, so... I, I don't know what to make a heads or tails out yet, but I will continue. And even NASA is saying this now, so that tells me that there's some credence to this. And yes, I did check to see if it was not an April Fool's joke. It's not. Okay, so you posted it up on your Facebook and Google Plus, so people could find the article and read it. And you're hoping that they'll read it. Yes, I do. And did you want to say anything more about this situation about the Dark Souls? Just. Be aware that Mother and Father God loves everybody and that they want everybody to be safe and be happy. And if you focus on doing the right thing, and even if the demons which need to make certain quota or they will face their own agony, if you stand behind your convictions and say no and mean it, and don't be led astray by the dark entities. Which means you're going to need help from Mother and Father God. And Mother and Father God and all the angels and the saints and all the thrones and principalities will stand behind you to protect you from them. But there's one important piece. You have to ask for their help. They're not going to give it to you without you asking. Remember, that's a free will thing. You have to ask for help when you need it. And don't be afraid to ask your help. It does not make you a pussy if you don't. It just means that it makes it be more tragedy if you think that it's to be a pussy to ask for help. It's not. It's especially when you're dealing with forces that organize the dominions of the devil or Baal or Lucifer or Hades. Whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter the name. Demeter. Demeter is, is a Greek one, yeah. Okay, so the point is, is that all these people are strong and powerful, but by yourself, um, as long as you truly believe in the forces of good, you got the, the mantle of the forces of good on your shoulders, and you use, and I don't like to use the word use in this case, because some people think of the word abuse, I don't mean abuse at all, but utilize the services of Mother and Father God and the, and, and the angels and the saints and the principalities and so on. You can make, you can survive it, but the minute you slip by doing something like using recreational drugs that basically open your mind to the things the evil dark entities and it makes your wills go down the toilet you're going to end up like that man in Texas dead oh and yeah your soul is damned too because you can't repent 
Sorry. It's too late. He didn't go for an exorcism. He did not go to a priest and ask for absolution of his sins. He did not ask for forgiveness as far as we know in the court papers. Yeah, he confessed to crime, but that doesn't mean that he's cured or made perfect in the eyes of God. You kind of have to realize that. Try to live a good life, but make sure to confess your sins and be open to be honest who you are and your limitations. All right, guys, as I know it's been a long time, and we will get some more videos in soon. I haven't done too many on my channel, and I know some people like my channel. Um, and, of course, Michelle and I are trying to get as many videos in as we can. It's going to be a time-consuming process. Um, to do this, so we're going to just go ahead, and while I'm going to just process this upload, just a little snip, 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 we'll get this up. Michelle's going to, at the same time, is going to go ahead, grab her camera, and to do her video, and then we're going to do the same thing, and just quickly get these up, you know, high priority, high, high, I'm sorry, high prioritize them because of time. As Michelle and I are going to need a prime time off tomorrow, we're not going to have time to wait indefinitely for hours and end for videos to upload. Okay, because this just can't happen. There's just too much going on in the world um, to do that. It's already, by the time it's already about 9 o'clock at night, and, and we have to get up in about um, in about five hours. And so, you know, we're going to try to get as many videos in as we can and still get some sleep. Right. So, for now, please don't forget to leave comments in the comment section below here. And we'll talk soon. And, and definitely I'm open to any other ideas or topics, videos, whatever. You tell me. We're listening Always. Okay? See you soon. Bye-bye.